All right, guys, we're back. It's Friday. You know what time it is. It's time for What the Fitness. And again, we have a new challenger on What the Fitness. And I'm sad to say this time it is Dr. Jim Stepani. Now, Jim was someone I looked up to when I got into this industry. And overall, I think he's put out a lot of decent content, in my opinion, until recent years when I don't know what happened. <laughs> I just... I don't know what happened. This video got sent to me, and so I'm gonna break it down. Doubling their testosterone levels. You can't do that with a single ingredient. It's the combination of those ingredients working by different mechanisms to raise your testosterone. So if you're 500 with these multiple ingredients, you might be able to get to that thousand, right. like I said. Some people have gone far beyond 1,000, my levels are around 1,200 with the Alpha Gym X. So Jim claims he's doubled his testosterone with this. I cannot confirm nor deny that. I would say that I'm very skeptical of that. I, I looked at the ingredients in JYM Alpha X, I think it is, and I kind of broke it down here. So ashwagandha, good ingredient. I like ashwagandha. Uh, that's in one of my supplements. At average in studies, it increases testosterone by 15%. Fenugreek, there was one study showing a 38% increase in testosterone, but in resistance trained males, it has no effect. I guess if you don't lift, cool. So what that indicates to me is that lifting can increase testosterone levels. And so fenugreek probably just doesn't raise that past what you can get out of lifting. Now, so fenugreek, almost all the studies that showed a positive effect were funded by a company that sells fenugreek. So, I mean, again, do with that what you will. DIM, which does not increase testosterone, but balances estrogen. She legit, probably pronouncing that wrong. There was one study showing it increases 31%. Uh, it's got quercetin in it. There was a study, a study that showed a 31% increase in testosterone, but that study was funded by a company that sells that ingredient. DHEA, kind of 10% increase in testosterone, but in young men, it doesn't increase testosterone. Boron, there's like one or two studies that show up, but then there's other studies that show no effect. So, I mean, if we add up this stuff, I mean, I guess you could argue maybe there's a 50, 60, 70% increase in testosterone, assuming these effects are additive, but there's no evidence that they're additive. He's claiming that some people have seen a doubling. I very much doubt that. Now, what I could see, because especially a lot of things function like this, is if you had clinically low testosterone, you were like 200, I could see maybe where it would bring you back up into like a three, 400 range, I could see that. But if you're already like 500 level testosterone, I kind of doubt it's going to go to 1,000. I'm sure Jim will argue differently, but you can't just look at individual ingredients and then say, well, this is what the cumulative effect is gonna be by adding up those percentages. That's not how that works. Otherwise, I could take the recovery product I sell and be like, well, look, you're gonna get this much increase in lean mass, because each of these individual ingredients increases lean mass by this much, but I'm not gonna do that because there's no evidence of that, because there's no, there's no test of all those ingredients at those dosage to show an additive or synergistic effect. So, I mean, the reality is, the only thing on this list that I'm pretty bullish on is ashwagandha, but not because of the small increase in testosterone, but because it appears to do a lot of things. It's an adaptogen. And we've actually seen things like increases in lean mass, strength, decreases in cortisol, increase, a small increase in testosterone, and an improvement in sleep pretty consistently in the research study. So I'm pretty bullish on that. But even then, I'm very reserved about how I make these claims. I just can't imagine making a claim of doubling testosterone. Most of these ingredients have a small or modest effect based on the compilation of the research literature the only studies that show a really large effect of these sorts of things are the ones that are funded by those supplement companies. I'm not saying that it can have an increase. It probably does. Would I be really shocked if it took your testosterone from 500 to 1,000? Yes, I would. But again, I don't think it's necessarily a bad product. I probably would omit about half the ingredients in it if I was making a testosterone booster, but I'm not gonna make a testosterone booster, and here's why. They really haven't shown that modest increases in the physiological reign of testosterone increase actual lean mass and strength. If you're somebody who is like outside the normal range in terms of low and you don't want to take TRT, maybe something like this could help. You could spend your money however, it is, however you want. 
It's not the most insane claim I've ever seen. It's just a claim that's impossible to debunk because I don't have access to these people's blood literature and I don't know whatever else they did while they were taking this supplement. So in any case, I just wish people who sold supplements were a little bit more reserved and transparent about how they presented the information rather than making extreme claims. Again, I sell supplements. Of course, you could argue that I'm going after Jim because I have a supplement company. That's not why I'm doing this. I'm really just trying to hold people to a higher standard in terms of how they make claims. And so I just wish we could have people be a little bit more transparent about what supplements do versus what nutrition and training does. All right, guys, catch you next week.